Is trouble brewing down on the farm? Farm equipment makers seem to be losing a little steam after a strong year, and some analysts believe there's a bigger slowdown coming. Jane Wells joins us from the World Ag Expo in California with more on the story. Jane. Hey, Melissa. Yeah, this is a brand new Fence 728 tractor. Uh, it's made by Agco. Here's what I like about it. You can pressurize the tires inside the cab. They can be more pressure if you're on the street and less pressure if you're on the farm because that's apparently important. You know, 2022 was a great year for farmers. Even with higher fertilizer prices, their net income hit a record $163 billion. You know, the ag equipment makers had a great uh, first uh, last six months with strong earnings, but year to date, they have underperformed the S&P. Um, not a good day to day. Interest rates are higher. Farm incomes are projected to fall. Deutsche Bank and Bernstein thinks we may have hit uh, peak spending and saying that, quote, pricing power is slowing in 2023. But Oppenheimer's Krista Owen says maybe not yet because supply chain problems last year actually held back some sales. You know, relative to, say, the last peak, 2013, which, by the way, was the last time we also saw peak net farm income, we're still 25 percent below on a volume basis in that high horsepower range based on the estimates that are coming in for 2023. Now, look at my favorite video of the day. It's a driverless tractor from a company called Monarch, which stops when it senses a human. Company started by some Silicon Valley engineers and one of the Mondavis of the wine family. It's taking over the Foxconn plant in Ohio. Autonomy, zero emissions, all buzzwords here. Some companies are building these new machines from the ground up, but other companies like Agco plan to retrofit autonomous functions into existing equipment. There's lots and lots of new technology. And what we want to do is allow a farmer to do that at a graduated rate in a way that they're comfortable, in a way that they um, maximize their return on investment. I mean, these are huge investments for farmers, and they have to be convinced they'll get a good ROI within two or three years, which brings me to the gopher whistle. What is a gopher whistle? It's when a farmer talks the ear off of a salesman for about an hour and then finally asks, what is this gopher? Oh, about $400,000. <laughs> I was wondering. Pretty I could good. whistle. <laughs> Pretty good. Thank Go you, Jane. It. Jane Wells. We miss you, Jane. It's great to see yeah. you. She loves those big tractors. Machines. Toys, machines. She's not yeah. alone. I know. I mean, you know She's the only one who can pull envy. that off. Look at that. <laughs> the tire's bigger than <laughs> Look she at her. She's yeah. snuggling with the tractor on this Valentine's Day. <laughs> lovely. Thanks, Jane. What a great place to be. Um, Caterpillar's chart is unbelievable. Caterpillar's chart is unbelievable. Uh, its valuation isn't great. I t I'd go back to Agco, and, and I, I'd say it's not time for John Mellencamp to do farm aid right now. I think there are good times going on in farmland, and for some of these companies, it's trading three or four times, uh, excuse me, three or four turns cheap to its historical. It's around 15 times forward. Uh, they had decent numbers. They had decent guide. They're taking market share in other parts of the world, uh, especially in Latin America and, and in South Africa. So I, I kind of like Agco here. I don't love Caterpillar. I just think the valuation's tough. Julie, quick trade on the farm. Yeah, I think the valuations on these are tough. And, you know, you think about the return on investment for all of these farmers. They have to make it work pretty quickly because they can't just assume prices are going to stay as high as they are today. It's tough.